how the conversation takes place and the interaction with the president. With all due respect to Mr. Gray, I don't need him to take a message from me to the president. <laughs> Mr. Gray, I'm pleased that you're here. How old are you? I'm, 70, I'm 72 years old. I've been doing this a long time. I've been elected by the people, served in the legislature, now in the Congress. If I'm reduced to having you take my message to the president, I need to go home. And so, let me just say this, that what we expect as we move toward this job creation is that there will be a working meeting with the members of the Congressional Black Caucus and the White House, where we hammer out the issues that we are concerned about. Why did you see Reverend Jackson when he talked a few minutes ago, get moved to tears? I'll tell you why. We all come from very humble backgrounds. Mr. Cleveland Public Housing Project, I'm from Public Housing Projects, Bishop, when we would go to church on Sunday, my mother would take a walk. It was 13 of us, 12 brothers and sisters. My mother would start wailing and crying. I heard the same wailing and crying just a few days ago at a church. You know what they're wailing and crying about? Because they don't know where the next meal is going to come from. They don't know where the next job is going to come from. They don't know what to do about their son, who probably is going to get end up profiled by the police and get taken to jail. They don't know whether or not that kid, who is just stupid enough to get involved with crack cocaine and get sentenced to long years, is ever going to come home. They don't know whether or not that house is going to be foreclosed on, because everybody around them is being foreclosed on. We 